Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Friday, November 11th, 2019. Uh, let's start out with the uh, charts I posted in pre-market today. These were uh, the the same trend lines that I was focused on yesterday in, uh, in yesterday's closing market video. These uptrend lines, and um, you know, so what had happened this morning is we had taken out that key. Uh, overnight, the futures had, had broken out above the 29.46 key level, the top of the uh, trading ranges in both ES and NQ. And so, um, you know, I mentioned we'll watch these trend lines. We're in an uptrend, and uh, indexes continue to respect these trend lines. And these charts were posted uh, earlier this morning, about 8, 8.20 or so, an hour or so before the open. That's ES, and this is what it looked like on NQ. And I uh, also mentioned that you had potential divergence. You were hanging on by a thread here with the RSI. That, that was taken out a little bit, but you still have a potential divergence and some pending uh, pending crossover on the PPO. So what happened? Again, that was uh, before the market opened today. Let's look, take a look at the charts. Uh, this is the same trend line. So we walked up those trend lines all day uh, for the most part because, again, the market's gapped up. So there was... I was on watch for that potential scenario I laid out yesterday. If, if the markets were to gap up today, which they certainly did uh, and with conviction, uh, they would have had to reverse almost immediately. And instead of reversing, they continued to walk up. Uh, now in doing so, they, they uh, tested the trend lines. We had a couple, one, two, three more tr tests today and uh, finally a break shortly before the close. So that did trigger, uh, yes, it happened just before the close, but it triggered a uh, you know sell signal. In fact, uh, was able to get off a, a post a little bit before the close. This is, has to be refreshed. That was um, uh, just before they took them out. And I said, here's the second test of those 60-minute trend lines today. It was actually the third. We had to hit them earlier, but I think the second test in the regular session uh, with 12 minutes to go before the closing bell, if we're going to get a late session dump, it will start with NQ taking out 78.65 and ES below uh, 29.74. Uh, so that's what happened. I went on to say I covered that day trade short at 78.40 um, because, and I, I was going to take a, and I did take a smaller short position home in my active trading account over the weekend because those trend lines are broken. So let's look at those. So. Uh, that's where we were. Really, I was queuing off the uh, the uh, one and, and five minute charts for those sell signals, but that's where they were triggered right there. So there was a a decent trade to be made, about a three quarter to almost uh, about maybe eight tenths of a percent drop from there. There was uh, if you look at it on the uh, one minute charts, a pretty big dump here. I can do that for you here. Let's just flip over to this and drag this down here, and you can see right there at the bottom. Here's where we are at. So. These were the levels I was waiting to go about right here and here, and we took those out. We were at the, the similar trend lines here, but uh, the ones I had, uh, you know, pretty much the same trend line. We broke it there, and then we needed to take undercut these lows. So there was that last minute dump uh, that the first part of the dump took us down to the trend lines, and we broke below, and we closed below. So let me jump back to that chart on NQ, same chart we were looking at, move back up here, and... So you can see as I zoom in here, not a big close, but a couple things happened today. Uh, we did keep the divergence intact on the PPO. Uh, the RSI slightly made a new high for all intents and purposes, about an equal high. Remember, on um, for negative divergence, you need prices making a higher high and the indicators either making lower highs or equal highs. In that case, you have that here on the on the 60-minute uh, PPO right there, about equal highs today, and you have a, a bearish crossover on the PPO as well, right there. That's the first bearish cross since right here, actually, right, right there when when that trend line broke, and that gave us that sharp swoon down in the futures the other night. Uh, so that's it. It's not a screaming sell signal in there. You can see, you know, we had 78.40 so where I covered because you can see right there. That's where we had support uh, for the day trade. When you day trade, that's a higher, much larger position because you don't have the overnight risk. You don't take a day trade position home into a weekend. Futures stop trading uh, tonight and then they won't open again until Sunday night. So anything can happen. Any kind of headlines can come out. Whereas during the week, you can control your risk. Uh, pretty much have round the clock day trades because futures, you know, they shut down a couple times after the 4 p.m. close and uh, just square things away for short. And, but other than that, they pick up and they trade uh, continuously and liquid throughout the night. So that's that. And so, therefore, we have the breakdown. And what I also wanted to point out here was the, uh, well, we'll get to that in the on the 
a 60 minute chart of QQQ in a second. Let me show you ES. There is a comparable trend line on ES. You can see that was taken out. And again, this is active trading stuff, guys, but I will get to the um, did the daily charts and take a look at what happened there today. Because overall, and I said that this morning, the breakout today, we broke out above multiple resistance levels, all that were highlighted recently. We took out this downtrend line in the futures last night. We took out the key 2946. That's the top of the August trading range. It's to the left there um, where we had all those reactions. And so there was a breakout and back test. So uh, on that, there's nothing that you can say about today but bullish other than, you know, we had a you know late day sell signal. But you can see once we took it out, we continued to walk up these trend lines. So they're very well defined. And what I did in the other videos today for members, uh, we covered some things, which I will, if you are a member of the site, you want to check out the analysis on gold recently, some things I've noted on gold, uh, the U.S. dollar and the euro uh, that could certainly come into play here, especially, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see where this goes next week. Again, that was covered in the other video. But uh, one thing to point out is, you know, the slope of this trend line is... Uh, very similar to the uh, slope and some of these previous uptrend lines. Even the 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 slope of this trend line, as well as the uh, uh, the duration or the distance of that trend line, the slope and scope, we'll call it. And there's a scope, how long the trend line is, and the slope of the trend line. It's it's very much equal to this one right here, and uh, so we'll watch. We'll watch and see what happens. Uh, we had a breakdown there, and you can see what what followed there. Uh, we had a small divergent high at that time. We have an even larger divergent high now. And so we'll we'll see what happens next week. But uh, again, kind of mixed bags because all in all, even though you had the late day sell off, we still closed positive. So there's no way to spin today as anything other than bullish. Uh, so I'll note when we get to QQQ in a second, volume was uh, low, below average. The volume today did not confirm. Only at the last second, uh, last few minutes on that big dump did the volume in QQQ surge, a selling volume, and that gave us, um, you know, about a average average volume today. Um, and what I'm talking about here is you want to see a breakout, ideally confirmed on above average volume, one and a half times or better the 90 or 60 or 90 day average volume. And uh, that, that wasn't the case today, uh, at least not on the on the breakout part and the rise throughout the day, only again that late session dump. So there it is. We'll, we'll take it for what it is right now. And look, we close right back down on that 2964 uh, support. And again, a little trend line break there. That's uh, ES and NQ. Again, I wanted to show you those trend lines. They show a little better on uh, on uh, NQ here than ES that I was just showing you. Again, we have this trend line here, uh, pretty long in the tooth right now on the 60-minute chart. Uh, and then you have these parallel trend lines here. All of these trend lines, even though this one was smaller, they run you know roughly parallel. And you can see small trend lines equal small corrections when they break. Bigger the trend line, bigger the correction, and so forth and so on. So we'll see what happens next week. I pointed this out today during the um, trading session in that video for members earlier. What we're looking at here is, uh, you know, on, on the RSI indicator, which we're using here, the, the default levels uh, when you put up an RSI, usually 70 for overbought. Well, they are 70 and 30 for oversold. But I always say this, every security is different. Uh, I don't have the lines up, as you can see on my NQ chart, at least not at 70 and 30, because that doesn't mean much. If you look at 70 and you try to get out of your longs every time you hit 70 or short, it's not going to work. So to me, I look for extremes on, on things like the RSI. And uh, this is the level. It's right there about 85 or so. And you can see what's happened here. You hit it there and you went up slightly, you went up, had a pullback and went up marginally. Small inc incremental gains from there uh, to put in negative divergence. That's the, the, the sloping down line with the up sloping line on price followed by a correction. Uh, next time we hit that extreme overbought condition, same thing. We barely inched up from there, hardly any gains from that point right there. Here's a high. And uh, it was negative divergence, and then boom, another correction. Kissed it here. Uh, put in another small divergent high to put that head on the head. Remember, this was a head and shoulders pattern that was highlighted back then. And with the neckline, broke down right here, back tested, and then we, you know, came all the way down actually all the way here before it had finished playing out so you can see the levels there and the, this was the last time we hit it and again um, now what you're seeing here is each and every time we hit it and NQ did go up more 
uh, hardly any. It's almost immeasurable, a quarter point or so. Uh, you know, well less, way less than a half, uh, way less than a full percentage point, even less than a half a percent. Uh, so an incremental marginal new high each and every time a divergent high. But I want to say this: sometimes when you hit these extreme overbots, it's a one and done situation. In fact, you can see a pretty, pretty impulsive move down on the RSI off that this time around. So where am I going with this? Well, at best, because of the overbought nature. Uh, in these divergences, at best, I think uh, Monday you'd see maybe another marginal thrust up, come, maybe come in and back test. It's a pretty steep wedge. It's going to be hard to back test. You'd have to shoot up pretty quick, and uh, and, and if so, uh, you'll probably get a correction there. Even though, again, uh, like I said, today was net bullish. Even though we had a fade into the close, the uh, queues closed closed up respectively about uh, one and a quarter percent, and uh, so. Uh, we'll have to see whether that proves to be a, a breakout or a fake out. There's still some work to be done. Uh, but like I said, near term, certainly near term bullish, definitely opens the door uh, for a run up to test and, and quite possibly break out. Maybe, uh, like I said, at most, I see very limited upside. We're going to get to the daily charts in a second. I still see at best maybe a few percentage points over the previous highs. And so the risk reward to me is clearly skewed to the downside at this point, even though the near term trend right now is bullish, but kind of called into question. And as I've been talking about, and again, I covered this today, I maybe didn't mention it today, this trend, the near-term trend from the September, uh, what was it, the uh, 12th, September 12th highs that I was talking about, that now has been uh, pretty much negated, the near-term bearish trend. I'm talking about the series of lower highs and lower lows because we've taken out this reaction high here as well as these previous reaction highs. So th while that trend is taken out, let's now take a look at uh, QQQ. All right, so there, this was the same downtrend line. We were looking at the futures a minute ago. There's the uh, September 19th highs right there. Yep, and you had a high right there on September 12th, but you can see this trend line right here is now a uh, another trend line that comes into play. And in fact, it's more significant because it's it has more reactions. Number one, it starts back here on uh, late July, July 26th, right? And you have, um, and we've already had, uh, three distinct reactions, right? The first one on July 26th, the second reaction high here, and another reaction. It shows well on the daily chart too. You can see those three distinctive reactions. So it's not the most valid trend line because it has that what I consider a minimum three distinct reactions in order to validate a trend line, but it is a trend line. It's something to watch for next week. It would kind of mesh with that marginal new pop up to put in a, uh, the divergence on that 60 minute chart of um, of NQ and ES, so we'll we'll see what happens. And much above that, you're going to take out that trend line, and and then here, this is where that trend line or that downtrend starts to get called into jeopardy. And I'm not even going to let's not refer to this as a downtrend because what we have, we had a low here, but since then we've been making a series of well higher equal lows. So what it is, and as I've been talking about, we're in a big sloppy trading range for the last few months, uh, and that's again. Just take a step back. Sometimes it's easy to get lost in the 60-minute charts. Um, you take a step back, and uh, this is this is what the market's been doing for a while now. You know, we had a little pop down there, but uh, so far it's gone nowhere, and we're still, you know, barely what we're about where we were, you know, way back here a year ago in the S&P 500. Tech has been stronger. That's why that QQQ is a little bit higher. But that's it. Uh, now, since we're on the daily chart, let's look at that. What happened today is we popped above the trend lines on the uh, off the 24th lows, December 24th lows. I've made mention several times recently that I'm not crazy about these trend lines anymore because I've had to modify them so much. It was first here off this low. We had some pierces through there, then a breakdown, and we traded through it too many times. So I've lowered it down, then I lowered it down again. Uh, this is where I had it recently. I'll take it on face value, but again, I'm not putting it as high a weighting as I might on a nice clean trend line with a lot of well, clean reactions, no no violations through the trend line. And I talked about this 191 level quite a bit in the past few months. We closed at 191.11, which is essentially right on there. You zoom in closely, you see this inverted hammer right there uh, today, that candlestick. 
And uh, there's a big gap there, too. So you want to watch, you know, if we happen to gap down, that has the potential to leave an island top. But again, let's just see what happens on Monday. I don't have a strong opinion. As I said, I went home mildly short in my active trading account, not changing anything in my swing trade accounts yet because we're still, here's that downtrend line I just showed you on the 60-minute chart of, of QQQ. One, two, three, and let's see what that happens. Um, PPO is just still a little bit below the zero line, starting to curl up, poised to make a bullish crossover. Um, but uh, so we'll see. Sometimes you come up, you tr the lines kiss and they get rejected. Other times you get a bullish crossover and that can start a new trend. So we'll watch this. So next week we'll kind of uh, be telling. Can we pop above here? Uh, like I said, to me it's a matter of if the market does. I'm looking at, uh, let me turn these lines off so I can measure. Like I said, maybe, you know, to stay within those, um, you know, the wedges to keep the divergences alive for three, four, five, six percent easily. I could easily see that uh, in the daily charts and that would keep this line right here. Here's our divergence line right there. That's just simply an extended divergence line, meaning we had negative divergence right here at this point. And if you extend this line out and QQQ goes on, pops up next week, that, you know, marginal new high, it's only going to extend these negative divergences that have been in place with these, you know, indicators making a series of lower highs. So this is, you know, the daily chart, much more important technically than the 60-minute charts, but it, the 60-minute charts will give you clues as to the near-term direction. So I spent a lot of time talking 60-minute charts because it's been more of an active trader's market than a swing trader's. And I continue to you know, reiterate that. I'm, swing trade ideas have been almost non-existent on the site lately because uh, you know the only thing I shared, a bunch of the shippers on Monday, half dozen or more, they're all up anywhere from 5 to 20 30 percent this week alone and I like those I said because they weren't first of all there's momentum there I've traded the shippers for years when the momentum comes into those things nothing out there can run like the shippers they can do a lot of those stocks can do a hundred percent in a matter of weeks uh, even a week or less uh, so the momentum is in there now and again what I like about them they're not indexed most of those stocks the majority of the shippers on my watch list and I have dozens of them they're small little obscure under the radar company that they have no correlation to the broad market and when you see how heavy buying or selling pressure in the indexes they're not affected your G well not G is not a good one but that's still you know Apple Microsoft Amazon you Procter and Gamble you pick your company they're components of the S&P 500 and or QQQ and so you can't swing trade when you have a range of uh, you know four, five, six percent to the up and down side, um, unless you're swinging for three, four, five percent. But uh, most of those index stocks are going to feel the pressure of inflows and outflows from the indexes because they're components, and they get bought and sold when the uh, mutual funds and the ETFs are are you know experiencing inflows and outflows. So again, this is just a sideways market. Uh, not very conducive to swing trading, and that's why I've spent a lot of time on the 60-minute charts. But some big developments. You know, I've been talking about it. These these charts can take months, uh, months to play out, even years on the weekly chart. Daily charts can take months to play out of. So there's what I'm watching. We'll keep it very simple. Let's see how uh, let's see how next week goes. Was today a fake out move? Will we gap down? If we do gap down, the same levels in reverse. Everything that I talked about to watch yesterday, these trend lines that were taken out, the, especially the big levels to watch next week. If we go back below it, 189.40 on QQQ. That's the top of the uh, August trading range, and then uh, 294 right here on SPY which is the top of the August trading range as well. Other than that, like I said, a breakout is a breakout until the list fails. Uh, so there's your you know cluster of candles today and so you know we opened, started higher and then uh, faded uh, not all today's gains we just came back right to the uh, right to where we gapped up. So we closed right on pretty much the the top of today's gap and uh, as you guys know as I said recently most gaps are backfilled, not all, but uh, so that's what you want to look for Monday. And I'll say this too: I always like to present both sides. Bullish case: if you're a bull and we do gap down or move down Monday, I, you know, if I was, uh, you know, if I cared to swing this market up for that extra three, four percent, two, whatever it might have to the upside, um, this is where I'd be buying with both fists at 294. Why? It's a back test of the gap. Number one, check. 
Uh, it's a, it would be a test of this uptrend line that I highlighted recently on SPY right there. Check, another support level. And uh, the key 294 level that traders have been trading off of for months now, uh, numerous reactions, so check. And uh, much below that, and that's where, that's why I'm doing this, much below that it gets pretty bearish. We could come in and back test this trend line, that's something else to watch right here. But uh, this is where ideally, if we do gap down, if the market just continues higher, that's even more bullish. It shows more buying pressure. Um, but I'm um, giving you levels, the most objective levels. I wouldn't, again, to me, to chase, there's just not a lot of upside left and the risk of a sudden reversal, especially in this news driven environment is just not worth it for swing positions but uh, you know tactical trades in and out long and short all day long on NQ and QQQ but not strategic trades or swing trades right now not on not on the not on the long side not yet QQQ uh, same thing we a little bit above the bottom of the gap today uh, the top of the gap I should say and uh, quite a bit of room down here, 189.40, so there's your level. It wouldn't be a full backfill on QQQ if we got there, but it would be that intersecting 189.40, again, the top of the August trading range, a big level, and the uptrend line right here. So you have, uh, there's your buy point. Uh, maybe if you went home short this weekend, you know, if you caught my post in the trading room as active trader and you want to just swing down, uh, even maybe watch the futures overnight uh, on Sunday and into Monday morning. Maybe QQQ gets, they get to a comparable level. That's where, again, if we do pull back, that's where the buyer should step in. Anything much more than that would mean uh, this breakout today was a fake out or a bull trap. So let's watch those levels. And again, there's your objective long or likewise, maybe if you're waiting to short or you're already short, this is where you'd want to add if uh, you break down there. And here's XLK. Remember, that's uh, by far the most important sector uh, out there right now. And you had this trend line here, breakdown, couple back tests, rolled over, came back up. We're close to another back test. And here's the, this is very comparable to that trend line I started out on the QQQ 60 minute chart. You have multiple reactions here, going back to late July. Another reaction here. I had this trend line. You can draw it one of two ways. You can come down, if you do this, and exclude a couple of these little spikes. You, you still catch all these reactions. You catch these reactions there. You catch that reaction high. And then you have just a brief, you know, spike above it and a close back below it. So either way, you have three or four distinct reactions there. And it shows well in the daily chart as well. So, um, you know, again, it's uh, resistance is resistance. Total has taken out. But what was bullish, we had a little bit better defined uptrend line off the 24th. December 24th lows and I had this alternative trend line here as well we gapped up today and closed right on right back you know what it really wasn't very comfortable not not much above that level pretty much right on it and there's that inverted hammer too so let's see how let's see how next week plays out um, again watch for a gap down if it's a gap down like I told you you're gonna have an, uh, a potential island top pattern that's when you have one candle separated on both sides by a gap and the MO for that if you want to short it they are their topping patterns and they come at the top you can also have an island bottom pattern like this you know price is leading down like that you gap down and then you gap up that's a bottoming pattern and the trading strategy for that is uh, if you get the gap down again on Monday then you short it and you should have your stop somewhere right not too far above the you know that candle maybe in the midpoint in case they want to run up a little bit and uh, so it's a, even if it's a lower probability trade, um, it has a very good risk reward. You have minimal downside and a lot of upside potential. And look at it this way. Like I said, we just pretty much closed right on that trend line. I'm going to highlight that again. Uh, so one way to look at this today, even though I've spent a lot of time saying the breakout on the 60 minute was bullish, we had a breakdown of the December 24th trend line, a back test here rejection and now another back test because we essentially closed right on it remember only thing that matters on a daily candle is a close so that fact we got above it close right on it so a gap down tomorrow and that's I'm talking about that shorting strategy minimal downside risk if you get stopped out uh, if we you know go ahead turn around backfill the gap and then move up compared to the upside potential if that happens to be the final back test of uh, this uptrend line um, before you know drop 
And should we continue up next week, XLK looks just like QQQ and SPY, where any new high over the next in the next couple weeks here is uh, guaranteed to be simply an extension of these uh, negative divergences that were already in place. So you can, you know, draw this trend line any way you want it. Um, you know, if we keep going up from there, eventually you can burn through the divergences. But that's that's what I'm looking at. So we'll uh, wrap it up here and uh, see how next week goes. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Have a great weekend.